Welcome to another episode of, oh man, here we go again. Well, are we there? Okay, cool. And welcome to another episode of Successful Marketing, Sales, and Relationships for Adult Business Owners and Entrepreneurs. I am your host, Sadan Wong. And today, yeah, that's right, today, what we are talking about is innovation. Innovation and evolving. The reason we're talking about innovation is evolving is because I was having a conversation with somebody recently and they were talking about great businesses from the past and old values and old, um, just old ethics and standards. And what we realized in the conversation as we started to look and see what those businesses were now is that even though they were built on solid foundations, they never really changed with the times. You know, so we start talking about Blockbuster or Panasonic or GE or any of those businesses that we really grew up on, how it just never seemed to move forward. I mean, you would think with the way the Discman and the Walkman were dominated by Sony that, you know, they would have been the Apple of this generation, you know, or that, you know, the way movies were bl dominated by Blockbuster, that they would have been the, the number one streaming service right now. But they didn't change with the times, you know, and just like the dinosaur, they went out the door. So today, you know, let's just start with, with questions. How many of you people at home right now ask yourself questions? You know, do you ever just sit down and ponder? You know, well, one of the things that, you know, I talk about with my clients and that I really try to adopt myself is taking at least 20 minutes a day at least 20 minutes a day to think about what could I do differently? What could I do better? What areas am I improving in or what areas do I need to improve in in order to make my business more successful? Okay. Now, the reason that I do that is because when you start to ask yourself questions, and all of a sudden it puts your brain to task. So if you ask yourself a question, what starts to happen with your brain is, it starts looking around. And what is it looking around for? It is looking for the answers to your questions. Okay. So if you start asking questions, bringing it to the top of your mind, then your brain will naturally start to look for the answers. All of a sudden, things will pop up in your timeline. All of a sudden, the commercials will look different to you. All of a sudden, you'll start seeing things when you're driving that are pertinent to your survival, i.e. answering your question. So 20 minutes a day, sit down, think about it. You know, what could I do to improve my business? Okay, so when you start talking about what could I do, now it really becomes about your mission. And what do I mean when I say it becomes about your mission? It becomes about what are you trying to get done? So um, as a business owner, my mission is to, number one and foremost, always have joy, freedom, and peace. Okay, so that is my number, those are my number one goals, joy, freedom, and peace. In other words, I don't want to do anything I don't want to do. I want to be able to do what I want to do, when I want to do it, and I don't want a whole bunch of people bothering and bugging me. Okay. So now the question is, what kind of business could I build that would allow me to do that? What would be something I could do for a living that I'm happy with? You know, and sometimes that means you got to change your business model. Okay. So if you need more joy, then perhaps you've probably gotten a little bit stale. Things have gotten a little bit boring. Um, your goals are either achieved or seem unachievable. So you got to come up with some new goals. You got to come up with a new mission. You got to come up with a new plan. You know, so now your new mission should be exciting. You know, even if it seems unattainable, it should still be something that excites you, something that makes you get up in the morning. So now when you get up, what are you really trying to get accomplished? Because once you have a mission, then you can tailor your life around that mission. And I know I'm kind of rambling, but I just really want to try to give us some foundation 
So if you're a little bit of boy, you're a little bit distracted, it's either A, you don't have a big enough goal that is exciting and attractive to you, or B, the goal seems unattainable. See, a lot of times when we jump out there and we have the goal of starting a business, once it's started, now it's like, hmm, I'm bored. Okay, we open. And now what? And because you're open, you've accomplished your goal. You see it a lot of times when guys go to the NBA. You know, once they get there, they've accomplished their goal. They're not hungry anymore. So if you're bored, time to time to refresh in those goals. Time to really get a new mission. Um, shout out to you know, a new book that I'm reading, you know, which is about choose your enemies wisely. You know, figure out some new people, you know, to focus on, some new energy um, to bring into the mix. And sometimes that's in the form of enemies. You know, 50 Cent says create people to compete with. You know, um, for me, I know that, you know, a lot of the early success that I achieved was around people doubting me. You know, I felt very much like Jay-Z in a sense when he, you know, said he wanted to start his own label and that he wouldn't be able you know, so if you're bored, if you if you kind of lost your way, the first thing you want to do is say, well, what would be exciting? You know, what would be something that's attractive to me? What would be a goal that would excite me? Would it be to double my um, revenue? You know, would it be to add three or four new quality employees? Would it be able to raise my price so that I could now get more per sale? You know, what would it be? Because once you start figuring out what excites you, then you can start building out a plan. You know, for me, my mission right now, going into 2024, is to help as many small business owners as possible really double and triple their income using free social media using all of my tools that I have at my disposal, you know, from copywriting to how to use social media, how to beat the algorithm, you know, how to hire the right people. Because the more small business owners I help, the more people can take care of their families, the more people who can take care of their parents, the more people who can enjoy their life. And the small business owners I work with are grown folks. So I want to have as many grown people as possible. And that's one of the things that gets me up in the morning. That's one of the things that keeps me doing podcasts. That's one of the things that keeps me reaching out to clients because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt there are people who need me. There are people who are counting on me. There are people who need to see me on my A game. So now for you, it's like, okay, what would be more exciting? You know, what's a more exciting goal? And then the second part of that is how does that goal affect the people around you? Who's counting on me? Who needs me? And if I really get it cracking over here as a business owner, who does it affect? You know, um, I did a, a workshop recently and I, and I spoke with some, some employees and one of my clients. And, you know, the thing that I impressed upon them is that this is a great opportunity for you. you know, this is a great opportunity for you to learn from somebody who used to be just like you and for you to also take the next step in your own journey, you know, to go from being part-timers and people who are just on the schedule to being people who are in leadership positions, and then to go from people who are in leadership positions to people who are owners. So now, maybe your goal is, man, I want to be the owner. I want to be the boss. I want to have multiple locations. So now who would that affect? Okay, well, cool. That would affect my kids because the more money I make, the more time I can spend with them, the more quality, you know, the time we spend, you know, because now we get to go to Disney World. Now we get to go, you know, on, on weekend getaways. Now we get to see plays on, you know, Broadway or, or wherever you live in whatever city, you get to see the stuff that you wouldn't have otherwise gotten to see. So even when you get old, now you've made these wonderful, beautiful memories. You know, how cool is that? You know, 
Mom, remember when we went to see the Wiz? Remember when we went to see Michael Jackson? You know, remember, remember, remember. But if you never have the money to do those things, then those are just memories you can't create. You know, and I'm not saying you can't have a good time singing in your kitchen. That's cool. But as a parent, as a business owner, don't you want to see you and your kids walking through Epcot Center? You know, as a, an adult who's worked their whole life, don't you want to put yourself in a position to see what an island really looks like, to, to see what Rome really looks like, to see what Hawaii really looks like, and to be able to do it with no fear of, well, when I get home, I got to go back to work. It's exciting. It comes in a variety of different packages. But if you're bored and you've lost your, your feeling and you've lost your mojo, first question you got to ask is, what would be more exciting? You know, what would be a more beautiful, more appealing lifestyle? Then you really want to start working on what do I need to do to get it? You know, and I equate everything with business and people are like, well, why do you equate life with business so much? And why is your business so important in your life? Because it's the engine. You know, your job is the engine. Your business is the engine. Your life is going to be equally as good or bad as what you do for a living. It's that simple. No matter what you do, if it's good, then your life's going to be better. If it's bad, then your life is going to be worse. You know, if you have a job you hate, it's taxing on your body, taxing on your mind, bad business model, where now, yeah, whatever it is that you deliver is very hard to deliver, then you come home with no energy. You come home in a horrible mood. Now you take that out of everybody in the house, or now you don't talk to anybody in the house. But if you make money easily, if your business model is good and it's low stress and you have high quality people, highly ethical people, hard working people working for you and with you, now the work becomes easy. Now the workload becomes light. And because the workload is light, you come home in a much, much better mood. You know, have a good day at work. Come home, no stress. Happy to see everybody. Everybody happy to see you. That's different. You know, that hit different, as they say. You know, because now you're not looking at just the money you make. You're looking at, man, it was easy. It was less stressful. Seemed like the day just ran by. What I do, I love, you know, and I see the progress we're making in that. So now it's easier to come home and jump for joy and hug on people and love on people. So, again, what does a more exciting life look like? You know, what would I have to do in order to make my life more exciting? Who would m my more exciting life affect in a positive way? So now, you start to map your, your map out. Okay, so what would I have to do? Okay, well, I'd have to increase my customer sales by this much. Okay, so how would I do that? Okay. Well, the first thing I'd have to do is raise my price. Okay, well, what would happen if I raised my price? Okay. Well, some people might not want to do business with me anymore. Okay, so I might lose some customers. So now the next question becomes, how can I keep those customers and still raise my price? So now you've really gotten down to the real question. How can I raise my price, keep my customers, so that I can then have the quality of life I want? So now the question becomes, how do I raise my price and still keep my customers? Well, the first way you would do something like that is just to offer a different package. You got your old package, 
then it's two ninety nine. Now you add some new benefits, some new lead magnets, some new bonuses that don't really take a lot of work to deliver. And you call that your deluxe package. You call that your VIP package. So you don't lose your old customers. And then at the same time, you get to keep moving forward and getting closer to your goal. So, again, start to really ask questions. You know, what would a more attractive life look like? And also, not only how would I get it or what would I have to do, the other question is what would I have to stop doing? You know, because sometimes the stop doing is equally as important as the doing. What would I have to stop doing to get a more attractive, more appealing life? Oh, or I might have to stop giving away so much of my time to people who aren't helping me get that more attractive life. You know, something that really um, has kind of been, you know, sticking with me lately is trafficking and distraction. And how when you look at the people who really love the internet, the people who really love spectator sports, the people who really love the drama TV or the real reality TV, and then you compare that to the amount of money they make over the course of their lives, you see that those people could make considerably less money as a whole. Not all of them. Not talking about you, but there are some people within that community who probably could be making more money. You look at fantasy football. I used to love fantasy football. I had to stop playing. Why? Because it became I became obsessed and it became addictive. So now I'm trying to beat these other guys at fantasy football. Not real football. Fantasy football. Nothing wrong with it. Billion dollar sport. One of the billion dollar activities. So now... I'm getting up early, I'm spending hours watching football, I'm spending more hours trying to figure out who to sit, who to start, I'm looking at injury reports, so I can play a game. So now, what could I do with that time that would allow me to move in the right direction? You know, and the thing that really stuck with me is that I'd rather go to a game than play a game. I'd rather be sitting in a stadium, I'd rather be sitting in a box, I'd rather be sitting on a floor than watching on television, looking at my phone every five minutes, trying to see who got three yards and if I'm going to win or not. So it's something that's really just stuck in my spirit, that when you look at the studies, the people who are addicted to those things make considerably less money. So yes, you have these really short-term bumps of dopamine, these really, you know, distracting moments where, you know, you kind of can zone out or zone, you know, zone out. But what is it costing you? You know, so again, what do I need to stop doing? And what do I gain by not doing it? You know, cutting back on television. You know, what do I really gain by cutting back on television? Or even at least changing what I watch. Am I watching things that ultimately are going to make me better or make me worse? You know, did I spend time or did I invest time? You know, and if you're saying, well, what's the difference between spend time and invest time? Here's the thing. You could get on the phone with somebody and talk to them for 15 minutes, get off the phone with them and have learned three new things, feel really great, feel really energized, feel really motivated. Or you can get on the phone with somebody for five minutes. They could tell you something you don't want to hear and then spend the next 45 minutes being mad about it. You know, which one of those would you like? You know, do you want to be in a situation where the people you spend your time with make you feel better? Bring energy to your life, bring clarity to your life, make you feel good, challenge you? 
help point you in the right direction? Or do you want to have a whole bunch of conversations with people who never put anything into you other than negative energy? Now, the reason I'm saying this is because, again, you want this beautiful, wonderful life. And we start talking about what it's going to take to get it. The question now becomes, what am I willing to stop doing? Am I willing to stop staying up late at night? Am I willing to stop going out on the weekend? Am I willing to save some money? Am I willing to read some books? Or do I just want it all to be organic? You know, it just kind of happens for me. You know, I go to sleep and wake up saying. You know, and I know a lot of this seems like really difficult stuff. But, you know, shout out to Scott Galloway. He teaches at, I want to say, NYU right now. And he's a marketing professor. And what he talked about that I thought was really cool and would really help adults who are kind of set in their ways is, what would happen if I just gave up a little bit? What do I mean? What would happen if I just gave up drinking on the weekdays? How much better could I perform if I just did that little thing? If I just didn't drink Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Hmm. How would that improve me? What would happen if maybe I had just one drink instead of two? How would that improve me? If I just watched a couple hours of TV instead of five? So couple professors, where well, one of them teaches at Duke, they talk about something called Uchi, you know, which is kind of making progress towards your goal, even if it's not a lot of progress. So as you ooch an inch toward a goal, even though it takes a little bit longer, if you're consistently making progress, you'll eventually reach your goal. So again, it really boils down to having some clarity, knowing what to do and where to start. And knowing what to do and where to start just really starts with thinking about it. You know, taking 20 minutes. I mean, I don't care if you do it while you're sitting on the toilet. Take some time to take inventory of your situation. How could I improve it? What could I do differently? What do I need to stop doing? Because, again, most of the time, you know, people don't rise to the occasion. They fall. And the reason they fall is typically because of their habits. You know, it's like you want to fight the bully. You, know, you want to beat your enemy. You want to be more competitive in your particular discipline. You, know, you want to be number one in your industry. But you're too busy. But you can't really say what you're busy doing. When you look back and take inventory, you might have some leaks and not even know it. Yeah. Your leaks might be how much time you spend on the phone. Your leaks might be you know, how much time you spend playing video games. Your leaks might be how much time you spend doing stuff for other people. You know, how much time you spend listening to other people. And to be clear, yes, when you try to change and you try to make these adjustments, People are going to push back. You know, when you stop being available, yes, people are going to push back. And in the words of the great Jack Canfield, this is not against you. This is for me. And that would be Jack Canfield of the Chicken Soup franchise. Yeah. So again, at some point you have to say, I can't live like this anymore. I want a more appealing life. I'm tired of just going through the motions. I'm tired of just being and existing. You know, I want to have a more exciting life. You know, and as we go into 2024, you know, those are the questions you need to ask yourself. What would a more appealing life look like? You know, what would I have to do? What would I have to stop doing? You know, and then continue to ask questions till you get to the real root of the whole thing. You know, because like I said, people are going to push back. So now when you say, okay, I probably had to stop going out on the weekends. 
Okay, well, what are my friends going to say? Okay, they're going to say I'm soft. They're going to say I'm punk. They're going to say I'm boring. So now what do you do in those situations? Now, for me, I told people to equate the journey that I'm on and the mission that I've undertaken as me trying to get my PhD or me trying to get my master's. Because for some reason, if you go to school, people will give you grace. But if you're an entrepreneur, then you're obsessive. Don't get it. Never will. Makes no sense to me. But I'm going to repeat it. For some reason, you know, when you go to school and you say, hey, I got a paper due. Or I need to study. I got a test. And you know, I'm working on my master's. I'm working on a PhD. People will give you grace. They'll be like, oh, girl, get that PhD. But they don't show you that same kind of grace when you're working on your business. You know, they don't show you that same type of grace when you're like, ooh, girl, got to get these videos shot. They don't show you that same type of grace when you're like, or I'm reading a book on marketing. Or I'm reading a book on customer service. Or I'm reading a book, you know, trying to enrich and improve my leadership skills. So, because they typically show you the same grace, because they typically don't show you the same grace, I'm so sorry, you got to take it. You, know, you got to stand firm. You got to be on your, your no way, not today, until you get what you want. And then figure out what the next step is and the next thing that you want. Because if you continue to let people drain you of time, energy, resources, you're going to be broke. Shout out to EPMD. You know, you hang around nine broke friends, you're bound to be the tenth one. You know, so while you're sitting at home thinking about it today, because that's my challenge to you, take that 20 minutes. You ain't got 20 minutes. What type of life do you really have? Take that 20. Start to think about it. What would a more appealing life look like? What would a more exciting, more beautiful, more wonderful life look like? What would a life with less stress look like? What would a life with more money look like? Okay. Who would that then help? You know, how would it impact the people around you? Because even those people who are hating on you are going to be positively affected by you reaching your goal. Yes, in the short term, they're going to be mad. Yes, in the short term, they're going to say you changed. Yes, in the short term, they're not going to like it. Because, yeah, now you're shifting roles. Now, you can't run people around. You can't listen to everybody's negative conversation. But then when you make it, oh, when you make it, they get to reap the benefits. Because now you know the path. You know the path. You know where to go. You know what to do. And now you can help them. You know, put your own mask on first. And not only can you help them by knowing the way, you can also help them monetarily. You know, big shot, successful business owner. Now you can invest in some of these businesses that your friends have. You know, be very careful, vet the businesses out very thoroughly, by the way. You know, but you can invest in some of these businesses. You can pick up some of these tabs. You can now go to some of these events that they're having because you've handled your business. So, again, we're going into 2024 gotta take that 20 minutes and do it do it for at least seven days in a row until you get a full picture of what it is that you're trying to accomplish what your mission is and what steps are important in order to get it done and if you cannot figure it out you know, feel free to jump in the comments feel free to hit the dm and ask me about it and the other thing is go over to growingrich.com Click the Make Money Fast call. It'll get you a call with me. Okay. Now, as somebody who's, you know, started a business after 40, I'm 52 now, but hey, man, I've been fired a couple times. I've been laid off a couple times. And those cash flow interruptions were not fun. You know, so my mission then became is to never have to rely on someone else for my income ever again. At least not anyone that I didn't know. You know, now, you know, if I sit across from a client, Oh, yeah, I could look you out of eye. But, I mean, there were people in cities that I had no clue about giving themselves bonuses, meanwhile plotting to lay me off. Yeah, never put myself in that position again. So that was my original mission. And I did it after 40. So for people who are 35-ish and you hate your jobs, 
Take the 20 minutes. Start figuring out what that new life will look like so you can start working on it. Didn't happen overnight. It was some rough days and some rough nights. And there's still occasionally a rough day and a rough night. But at least now I know why. Yeah. Before, stuff would happen at the job. People get chewed out on a call I was never on. And then they come in and chew us out and tell us what we need to do and what we need to get done and what we're not doing. Yeah. And most of the time, it wouldn't be stuff that had anything to do with us. But they got to take it out on somebody. So, again, take the 20 minutes, man. You worth it. You work 20 minutes of figuring out how to make your life better, how to make it easier. You know, you're worth asking the questions that will lead to you having more peace, more joy, more freedom. You're worth everything that you get. You deserve it, especially if you put in the time and energy to get it. So, as always, this is your business, Big Bro, Sadan Long. It is Monday. We are fastly approaching Christmas. So for my business owners who tune in, tighten up. You know, aggressively push those add-on items. Aggressively push, you know, those grab bag gifts. Aggressively push the products that you have so that people know that they exist. Because we are finishing up on the you must buy portion of the year. You know, for my people with your online courses, hey, man, aggressively, you know, start doing those Facebook lives. You know, make sure that you have clear messages that people can understand in, in under three seconds. Because you only got three seconds. And everybody's trying to put their stuff out there and sell their stuff. So, if you're not out there, nobody's going to know about you. And if what you put out there doesn't make any sense, then nobody's going to buy from you. So, while you have time, be more aggressive, be more determined, be more focused. And again, man, I love you, and it's been an honor and a pleasure. So, until tomorrow, this is your business, Big Bro, sit on along, a.k.a. the most dangerous man in the market, with another episode of Successful Marketing and Sales for Adult Business Owners and Entrepreneurs. Have a great day.